Hey gang, and welcome to another worksheet solutions walkthrough for the worksheet, understanding and recognizing aromaticity. Okay gang, so you're easing on into the wonderful world of benzene chemistry. <clears throat> and this is just a small worksheet, really just at the beginning to really hammer home what aromaticity is and how to recognize it when you see it, or how to recognize when you aren't seeing it, or how to recognize when you see the opposite of aromaticity, anti-aromaticity. So if you're here looking for answers, you know the spiel, right? This is just the video where we go through the worksheet that this is attached to. You're looking for answers and explanations. Hopefully I can give them to you. Let's go. Okay, gang, rolling into problem one, we see that we have a uh, benzene ring in both scenarios, but we have different reagents. In the top reaction, we can see this looks like a Markovnikov addition of HBr. Down here, we see the very familiar bromination of a benzene ring, Br2, FeBr3. And you can see that we are told this does not work. Doesn't happen, reaction doesn't go. But down here, all systems cleared, green check mark. This is a good reaction, but the top one, not so much. Why is that the case? So remember, aromaticity is a super stabilizing effect, right? When you are aromatic, which benzene is, so what I'll do is I'll label this reaction A, I'll label this one reaction B. Let me just do two energy diagrams. So this will be a, this one will be B. And remember those pesky energy diagrams. When you go up, that means whatever your molecule you're placing this energy diagram or you're starting with the reactant or whatnot, that means how much internal energy the molecule has. If the molecule has more internal energy, it has more energy. It's more reactive. Nature loves stability. We want to live low on these energy diagrams. So, in both scenarios, we are very stable in benzene. So we're starting, you know, and I, I could go lower, but I need to, I need to uh, have some ability to draw a line lower than the one I just drew. So you can see I tried to make these even. So if they aren't, I'm sorry. So in A, you can see we go from being aromatic and we, this reaction doesn't allow us to regain aromaticity at the end. So we're actually, you know, we're, we're super stable here and it's not a knock against this product but we lose this super amazingly stabilizing effect, which is aromaticity. So even though this is a, like a good reaction, we get more unstable. So this is actually an, a wickedly endothermic reaction. I don't know how endothermic, but what I can tell you is disrupting the ring's aromaticity here is very bad because we're going to go from a place of very low energy, good stability, and we will be much higher energy relative to that you know, aromatic reactant, the starting point. However, over here, you can see we don't have to mortgage, we don't have to uh, sacrifice the aromaticity. So in fact, you could say this will be um, exothermic. I don't know how much more stable this would be or how much energy is given off, but we're certainly going to have this reaction go and we're gonna be as stable, if not more, at the very end. So, you know, if this is your benzene right here, And I'm just not good at connecting the lines, you know, but I tried to make this go lower. Obviously, we still have an activation energy. We still have all of those characteristics doing a reaction. But the big difference here is that if we try to do our Markovnikov condition here, right, this reaction, if we try to do any reaction when we don't regain our aromaticity at the end, it's not going to go, right? It's going to be really hard to motivate benzene to give up that amazing aromaticity that makes it so stable. But if we can, you know, get some reagents going where we can maintain it and get it at the end and do a transformation at the same time, that's best case scenario. That's problem one. This is a short walkthrough, so let's finish up with two. Okay, gang, let's rip problem two and finish out this walkthrough. Hopefully the shortest one we've ever had. So if we take a look here, we have, do my math, 12 structures that we need to identify as either aromatic, non-aromatic, or anti-aromatic. So remember, for aromaticity, right? We are looking for a ring that's conjugated. We are looking for it to be flat and we are looking for Huckel's rule. Huckel's rule being 4n plus 2 pi electrons to be satisfied. And remember, if you fail one of those um, things, then you are non-aromatic. Or if you satisfy all those but you have 4n electrons, then you are anti-aromatic. So those are the rules. Let's play. So if we take a look here, so we obviously have a ring, 
we have one, two, or so we have SP2, 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 and SP2, right? That carbocation is SP2 hybridized. It just has an empty P orbital. So we have ring, flat, or and conjugated, and we have six pi electrons because two, four, six. This is in fact aromatic. Follows all the criteria, okay? Then moving along over here. So hopefully, while you see that it's a ring, right? And before we even, um, you know, we need to make sure it's conjugated. So hopefully you can see there's no ring system where every atom is sp2 hybridized, right? If you just consider this ring right here, you can see this carbon right here is not sp2 hybridized, it's sp3. And up here as well, right? These two carbons would be a problem. So we can't even get past the ring conjugated piece of criteria. So this is going to be non-aromatic, okay? So then moving right along, so we have a ring, it's conjugated because sp2, 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 we have all the p orbitals next, you know, next door to one another. We are flat, and in terms of Huckel's rule, we have four pi electrons. Now that's not four n plus two, right? That's actually four n right, because n could be one. We see how that would satisfy, not Huckel's rule, but actually the, the, the mathematical relationship that shows us anti-aromatic molecules. So this is almost aromatic, but in fact, it is anti-aromatic, okay? Now, if you look at the next door neighbor, hopefully you can see almost all the same similarities. Yes, we are a ring. Yes, we are conjugated, flat, the number of pi electrons though, also four. So this is also anti-aromatic, okay? So now gang, I'm gonna flip over here. This is a very specific problem. So if you see this right here, it would lead you to believe it's anti-aromatic because it's a ring, it's conjugated. You know, how do we know? We always just assume it's flat and you see two, four, six, eight, eight pi electrons, which would satisfy four N. This particular eight-sided ring, though, is a classic example. It's one I've seen on many, many, many tests where it has all the looks of non-aromaticity, or sorry, anti-aromaticity, but this structure is non-aromatic because it is not flat. This thing actually adopts kind of like a uh, foldy chair type thing, Majigger. I can't draw the whole thing. Point being is this is one of the pointed examples of a structure failing one of the pieces of criteria of either air, aromaticity or anti-aromaticity because it's not flat, okay? So mark this one down. I've seen this just kind of thrown on tests. Usually your teacher would probably mention it, but it is one of those weird ones. It's not flat. So it fails that one piece of criteria that we usually just always accept to be true, okay? So over here, and I misspoke in the instructional video. This is furan, not THF, not tetrahydrofuran. So T, or sorry, I almost said it again, furan. So what you would see in resonance is that this oxygen can swing electrons down like this and whatnot, or because the first thing we're gonna look at is, yes, it's a ring. We do see sp2, 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 sp2. And we see this oxygen up here. Well, it does have two lone pairs. It will throw a lone pair uh, to be parallel to these, but even through the resonance, <coughs> this oxygen, you can actually see that it has a lot of sp2 character uh, as a result, right? So we see it's a ring, we see it's conjugated two, four, six pi electrons, because only one has to count. That does satisfy four n plus two, it equals six. So this structure right here is in fact aromatic, and it comes down to that oxygen you know, the structure sees the benefit of how it could be so much more stable if this oxygen contributed two electrons to the pi system and the oxygen plays ball, it actually becomes sp2. That's a topic for heterocycles way farther down in OCHEM 2. But this thing, essentially oxygen contributes the two electrons, makes it parallel to the rest of the p orbitals, you know, that contain these electrons right here. And we get six pi electrons, four n plus two, Huckel's rule, good to go, aromatic. Moving over here, I like this question because uh, it's a little tricky. So we do have a ring, we are flat. We see sp2, sp2, and 
Weirdly enough, so we're conjugated because sp2, sp2. The, you know, the way those carbons end up being sp2, though, are from pi electrons outside of our ring. So we only count these two electrons right there. So we have all the criteria, but now with Huckel's rule, do we have 4n plus 2, and it looks super weird, but 4n plus 2 equals 2? Well, if we made n0, 2 equals 2. So, in fact, this works. This is good to go. We satisfy Huckel's rule. We are aromatic here. Okay, moving on over here. Hopefully you're thinking, Joe, what are you doing? And you're right, guys. Sorry about that. This isn't even, this isn't even a ring. Hey, get out of here. This is not aromatic. Big, a big old poser. Okay, so moving down here. This one's a little crazy. It's a little kind of bicyclic. Or I guess tricyclic type thing. So we are a ring. Yes, we are. Is the whole thing conjugated? Well, in fact, the whole thing actually is because you see sp2, 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 sp2. Moving over here, sp2, 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 sp2. Everyone's sp2. We have rings. <clears throat> Sorry, we're conjugated. I already said that sp2 flat. Now with this though. How many pi electrons do we have? The answer is we're going to count them all. So there's 12. And you're going to see that this math doesn't work out. However, this math does work out. So this structure right here is actually anti-aromatic. Okay. Now over here, this is our lovely friend pyridine. You don't need to count this lone pair. You can see 2, 4, 6. SP2, because of that double bond, SP2, 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 SP2. So we're a ring, we're conjugated, we're flat, um, six pi electrons from the double bonds. This is in fact aromatic, and you will be using pyridine later on in OCHEM 2, depending on what your teacher decides to cover. I hope you're pros at this by now, non-aromatic. You can see that because that top, the carbon at the top of the ring is not conjugated, can't do anything about that there. Last but not least, we have this bicyclic ring, so we definitely have the ring. We the structure is flat, or we conjugated sp2, 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 sp2 because of this double bond, sp2 right there, and then sp2, 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 sp2. Excellent. So we're gonna count all the ring, oh, sorry, all the pi electrons. So we have six, eight, ten. That absolutely jives with four n plus two when n equals two. So this puppy is also aromatic, and that rounds out problem two, gang. So hopefully after this. You know, if you were coming here for one of the problem, you know, I'm sure this one probably caused some confusion, maybe, potentially. Hopefully it's not confusing anymore. Gang, if you're watching this video, that means you've supported Joe Kemp financially, and I can't. Thank you. I know I say this at the end of every video, but seriously, thank you. No one has to watch these videos. No one has to use this site. But if you're using it, I hope it's because it's helping you in organic chemistry. In organic chemistry. Uh, oh, what was I going to say? Uh, just thanks for watching. Uh, I hope that, you, you know, Joe comes helpful for you now. I hope it's helpful for you at towards the end of the semester, the end of your organic career. But if anything, I hope to see you all in the next video.